looking at a return to winter across many parts of the country, you can see out west clear skies. So we've shut down that Pacific conveyor belt of moisture and the flow is turning more towards the northwest. Let's head right into that surface chart, the first big Alberta clipper coming out of Canada and into the Great Lakes area. And with that, some snows around Lake Michigan, Lake Superior, and back into Wisconsin and Minnesota. The triple point located in northeastern Missouri, 40s and 50s, just to the southwest of that, but you can see that we're not really bringing up much moisture at this time. Dew points in the 20s and 30s in Texas and Oklahoma. Down to the south, high pressure. Some beautiful conditions on Orange Beach in far northwestern Florida. And the Weather Service in Mobile, Alabama, using the nice weather to get some upgrades done to its NEXRAD radar. And moving up north, we go from nice weather to winter. That's a look at Chicago this afternoon, the Dan Ryan Expressway, getting a quarter mile visibility and slick roads, snarling traffic in Minnesota. Green Bay also getting some of that messy weather and a lot of that snow will move eastward into Michigan this evening, but you can see out west another wave developing in the Dakotas, especially around Sioux Falls, Sioux City, and that'll spread into Iowa tomorrow morning. And there it is up there in Montana. That's going to be the next weather maker moving southeastward overnight, and that's basically another Alberta clipper on its way east. And part of that front extending all the way into Washington. And that'll have impacts through the weekend in this area here. In the southwestern U.S., some rather mild weather. On the cool side, temperatures in the 50s, even in the deserts. And tonight, Phoenix, Arizona, expecting to drop to 39 degrees, which would make the third longest stretch of sub-40s temperatures since 1989. Lots of snow through the Rockies, bringing down visibilities. There's a look at northwestern Colorado. And as we work our way up the Rockies, Monarch Canyon in Montana, also seeing some rather wintry weather. Let's head out into the Pacific and head up the West Coast. Some of that cold weather starting to infiltrate the valleys of British Columbia right there. You can see that return of fog and stratus and snow. Temperatures are rather mild, temperatures in the 20s, but we are looking at colder temperatures just to the east in Edmonton and Calgary. And you probably remember back on Wednesday, we had that strong southwesterly flow into southeastern Alaska. Ketchikan, Alaska, which is located somewhere in here, they got their warmest overnight low for the date of 43 degrees, and that's a 106-year record. Heading up north into Alaska itself, winter storm warnings for the southwest part of the state there. They're expecting about a quarter inch of freezing rain and three to six inches of snow a little bit further to the north around Bethel. Heading out to the east, yep, our typical Arctic icebox weather. Seeing a little bit of a drop off in temperatures down to minus 42 up there west of Hall Beach, not sure what station that is, and surrounding that, a large area of minus 30s. And going down into the prairies, a drop off in temperatures down to minus 10 to minus 20. Haven't seen temperatures that cold in that region for quite a while. And down in the southern tier areas of the prairies, temperatures dropping down to single digits in degrees Fahrenheit. So let's focus in on this wave right here in Montana. The satellite imagery as we record this showing a quasi-geostrophic disturbance moving through the central Rockies, the largest area of upper level lift located in Wyoming, Montana in far northern Colorado. And the tail end also showing a band along the Interstate 70 corridor into Utah and down into Nevada. In the wake of that, cold air advection and some clearing in the mid and upper levels, but still a lot of residual low cloud out in the valleys of the Great Basin region. 
The 500 millibar height field showed a disturbance mostly in the form of a jet max right there in western Washington. The axis of that jet running about like that and this whole area right here is part of that geostrophic disturbance. If we roll this forward from the morning into the afternoon hours you can see that working down into the Great Basin area. So there is some of that energy located far out to the east but at 500 millibars a lot of those strong dynamics are showing up a little bit further to the west. And focusing our attention on the Midwest you can see a strong advection lobe located right there. That's your classic shortwave trough. And as we roll this forward into the midday hours and into the evening, you can see it move rapidly to the east. So there it is at 6 p.m. If we back that up to noon, located right there. And that's an area of upper level lift moving rapidly to the east. And here's how it looks on the radar plots as we record this already moving into Indiana and Michigan. Not much being indicated by the radar on the backside. And we always want to double check that with the surface chart. Looks like a few flurries coming down around Madison. And it looks like up to the north also a few showers coming down in northern Wisconsin. So let's see what we're looking at over the weekend. One thing to keep an eye on is going to be this trough. Whenever you have a shortwave descending into the base of a larger trough, that tends to increase in amplitude and deepen. And if we roll this forward, you can kind of see that happening down there in Colorado and New Mexico. This wave will be responsible for some weather going into Sunday as it moves into Texas and Arkansas, kind of flattens out at that point. And then we see this other wave coming down from the north. See that right there? That one really deepens, so we're looking at Sunday evening, closing off into a low over California and moving all the way down into Los Angeles and into northwestern Mexico. So it's going to be kind of a slow process. We're only up to Tuesday here, and eventually it gets picked up around Wednesday going into Thursday and moves out across the southern plains. This is a look at the 500 millibar heights and temperature. You can see over California, temperature is about minus 18 Celsius. But as that trough moves south, temperatures in the mid-levels drop off to minus 26, minus 28. And that's going to steepen the lapse rates. And that's a, a big reason why you get a lot of shower activity. You get that destabilization in the mid-levels. And that's definitely supportive of elevated convection. And as that moves out there into northwestern Mexico and the southwest region. It opens up, but some of those cold temperatures do spread out across the southern plains, and that will likewise destabilize the atmosphere in that region. Of course, the flip side of all this is the surface patterns. So let's go to the surface pressure in the 1,000 through 500 millibar thickness. This is a very common chart we use in forecasting. The thickness indicated by the red lines and the pressure by the black lines. We've got this polar high coming down out of Canada. That's going to be the big thing that we're going to see on this chart as we go forward. And also this cyclone over Minnesota. This was this morning already that's moved down into the Great Lakes. But you're going to see that track to the east. And also we've got this ridging across much of the western U.S. linking into this 1040 millibar high out in the Pacific. So we go forward. There's the evening chart. We can see the polar high edging into Alberta and pushing those colder thickness values down into the Canadian prairies. So as we go forward into the weekend, this is going to be late Saturday. We've got a lot of cold air coming down through the central U.S. and as well into Wyoming and into Idaho and Washington. So this is going to be a new push of cold air. There it is, the leading edge about like that, and out into the Pacific like that. And there's probably a warm front somewhere in here. Kind of hard to pick that out. But up to the northwest, look at those pressures, 1052 millibars in British Columbia. So that'll definitely be associated with some much colder air. And when we see that high pressure that far west in Canada, that usually means impacts in the northwestern U.S. and into the Great Basin region. 
as we move forward into Sunday and into Monday, that cold air just continues to sink south, reflected by the higher pressure and the lower thickness values. So the front is going to be about like that, extending into Nevada, and then picking up as kind of a Pacific system, about like that. And on the other side, I'm going to go something like that. So there's your frontal boundary on Sunday evening. And you can also see the 540 decameter thickness line located right through here. That tends to be your rain-snow transition line. So a lot of the stuff here is probably going to be snow in the Rockies and Nevada, California, at least in the Sierra Nevadas, and a lot of that stuff in the northeastern U.S. likely to be snow as well. But all this in the southeastern U.S. is going to be liquid. So that cold air continues sinking into the southern U.S. for Monday and Tuesday. And we've got an offshore component so that cold air is continuing to ooze into the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico region. And here comes a new outbreak of cold air. This is a new Alberta clipper developing. See that troughing right there? That's where these tend to develop. And this is being driven by a 1032 millibar high, so maybe a little bit weaker. So that sinks southward, affects mostly the Midwest region, and just kind of reinforces this cold air across the eastern states. Then we recharge. Once again, here's some troughing. Troughing is always a good location for these clippers to develop. So there's the warm front wing and there's the cold front. And this comes together very slowly. Very slowly. In fact, yeah, that's going to be the leading edge right there. And that's taking a track more to the east. And then we get up to the 6th and 7th of February. And that's probably a good place to stop right there. It looks like a lot of our weather is coming from the Pacific. That looks like a little Pacific system. Let's go back. Yeah, see that developed out there in Texas. And we backtracked that all the way into the Pacific. And it was probably part of this system that came into California around February 3rd. And we've had some requests for a Europe. Let's take a look at that region. Not much going on right now. Some ridging from near the Azores all the way to the UK and into Scandinavia. So northerly flow through France and Germany down to Spain and up to the north, westerly flow into Scotland and into Norway. If we go forward, things are pretty cold across Europe. You can see the 540 decameter, which corresponds to that rain, snow transition line all the way down to Germany and into France. A warm-up. This is all warm air spreading into the UK, but another cold front coming in from the west. And that spreads into Denmark, into Germany, and into Poland by Monday. So there will be a quite a cool down with this next burst of cold air advection, and there's another one coming in from the west. So a lot of the weather coming from the northwest over the next week there's a strong little low near the Shetland Islands all the way to Norway for Wednesday. And that moves down into Germany and Poland and brings some precipitation with that. So I did want to return to the 100 millibar chart. You don't see this very often. This is way up in the stratosphere. Now, when we talk about sudden stratospheric warming, that kind of thing, we really need to be looking at 10 millibars, which is, I think, up above 100,000 feet. Well, we don't have those fields here. We've only got 100 millibars, but this does show some very interesting weather. For one, look at the cold temperatures across Svalbard, Greenland, north of Iceland. These are all temperatures down around minus 68 Celsius. You can see the blue shading, so that's going to be around here on that scale. Meanwhile, in Canada, rather warm conditions, minus 40 that corresponds to that cold air mass that we have there. And you can see those are purples and light blues. So that's going to be here on the scale. So much warmer, very cold in this region, very warm in this region. And this is part of that warm up we've had in the stratosphere taking place this week, much of that warming right in this region here. 
And we can kind of see how that evolves over the next week. Not much change, really. Things holding pretty steady. And the meaning of all that, I'm not really too sure. I'm not a specialist on stratospheric weather. However, last week we were looking for that polar vortex to weaken and for the circulation to reverse. So I'm going to leave a lot of those details to the experts. Let's just take a look at the surface temperatures. This is over northern Canada here. You can see lots of minus 40s. The scale here is in Fahrenheit. So you can kind of track the development of some of these Arctic air masses going forward. You can see briefly around Tuesday or Wednesday the appearance of some minus 50 temperatures up there. Now it doesn't look like that comes far south. In fact, most of it spreads down into Ontario, the Great Lakes, and into Quebec. You can see this little region of minus 40 north of Montreal. So they're going to be getting the brunt of this Arctic air. It's going to be taking a track kind of like that instead of down into the U.S. So for those of you who hate cold weather, this is probably a blessing. And for the rest of that run, I need to move it a little bit further north. You can see some minus 40s up there, very close to Montreal and Quebec City for February 5th. However, this is interesting right here. Look at that. That takes a track a little bit more towards the Canadian prairies. So that's going to bear watching minus 40s over northern Saskatchewan. And usually when we see that happen, that means that the northern plains is under the gun. On the other hand, not seeing that much anticyclogenesis from Yukon down to British Columbia and Alberta. This is centered a little bit further to the east. So usually when we see that, we're looking for a track more towards the Great Lakes or the eastern U.S. and not so much in the central U.S. But this is 240 hours, so we'll revisit that next week. Also some reports coming out of New Zealand as far as record rainfall around Auckland. And that's probably due to this low pressure area here. I've not tracked the weather, but that definitely looks tropical. You can see that 570 decameter line right through the middle of that. And the main Bear Clinic storm track as well to the south, with them being in austral summer. There's a look at the satellite imagery, Auckland located right there. And reportedly, they got their entire monthly January rainfall in less than one hour today. And it's reportedly the wettest month on record. They got 6.33 inches, 161 millimeters. So that's quite a rainfall total for them. And for those of you in the U.S., we're going to be watching this stuff up to the north. You can see that going into Saturday and Sunday, large area of snow spreading southward along the backside of that front. Reaching the Panhandle, Colorado, Utah. And as we get these other systems developing along the southern track, we will have a chance for rain and some mixed phase precipitation just to the north. That 540 line coming pretty close to that track. So getting into Tuesday and Wednesday, some possibilities for some wintry precip in this area here. Don't really know exactly where that is at this time. I'm not going to really worry about that till Monday's show. However, that will bear watching for early next week. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. As a reminder, we do not run commercials, no advertisements on this channel. If you want to keep it that way, please support us. And thanks to our newest supporters, Daniel and Robert Wheat. Thank you for helping to support the program. And when you support us, you will get access to our private Monday show. So with that wintry weather coming up for parts of the southern U.S., this will probably be a good time to sign up and become a supporter. Hope you all have a great weekend. Take care and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.